Welcome back to the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. Today, we're going to dive into a topic that has puzzled many horse owners and veterinarians alike, myself included, as I've had two aged geldings with this syndrome and it's fecal water syndrome. If you've noticed unusual changes in your horse's manure, a watery discharge that's separate from solid feces, meaning they have a regular bowel movement, right? But then there's that oozing of what looks like dirty water. You're not alone. Many of us have been struggling with this. And while it can be frustrating to manage, understanding the causes or possible causes and treatment options is very much the first step toward helping your horse feel a whole lot better. So what is fecal water syndrome? Well, it refers to a condition where horses pass water separately from their solid manure. And that's a problem that not only affects the cleanliness of your horse, but it can also lead to some discomfort and potential skin issues on the hindquarters. And boy, do I remember that. I would bathe my horses every single day, not bathe them completely, but wash their backsides with warm water every day and put a barrier on there to hope it, hope that it would just sloth off and the water wouldn't just sit on the skin and burn it. Oh, despite extensive research, the exact cause of fecal water syndrome continues to remain unclear, really. But we're gonna take a closer look and see what the studies have uncovered thus far. So what are some of the potential causes? Veterinarians and researchers have explored many potential causes for fecal water syndrome, but a clear underlying cause has yet to be identified. It's interesting that there's been two separate studies that compared the gut microbiome, which is the bacterial population in the digestive system of horses with fecal water syndrome to that of very healthy horses. And what were the results? There were no significant differences between the groups. So this suggests that fecal water syndrome is not linked to typical infectious causes of diarrhea, you know, like equine coronavirus or salmonella. There was a study done in Germany where they took a closer look at some commonly proposed theories such as dental disease and heavy parasite burden. Surprisingly, neither of those seem to be associated with fecal water syndrome. However, they did find some intriguing patterns. Horses of lower social rank in a herd, especially those that are confined during the winter, were more likely to exhibit fecal water syndrome. Huh, and what's interesting is that geldings were also more prone to it than mares. And certain breeds like paint horses appear to be at a higher risk. That's interesting. So what's the role of stress and environment? These findings hint at the potential role of stress and environment in fecal water syndrome. Horses that are lower in the pecking order might experience a bit more anxiety, especially during the winter when they're confined to smaller spaces. And this stress could be a contributing factor to the development of fecal water syndrome. And that is interesting because my two geldings definitely had more flare-ups during the colder months when they weren't out um, on free pasture. So they were in a more, um, a smaller paddock with 24-7 hay, um, which was wonderful, but it didn't, the 24-7 access to hay in a slow feed, it didn't change it. it. It definitely was the smaller environment and the cold weather. So let's look at veterinary diagnostics. When it comes to diagnosing fecal water syndrome, your vet's gonna likely approach it similarly to other digestive issues like diarrhea. They'll start by taking a thorough history and performing a complete physical exam with their focus on the digestive system. They may also recommend specific tests to assess your horse's overall health and the condition of your horse's GI tract. 
Observations like soiled hind limbs, a dirty tail, and even stall bedding can provide clues. So your vet may also want to review your horse's feeding and management routines. And, in, and you might want to also let your vet know about um, the social dynamics in the herd. You know, if, if this, if your horse with fecal water syndrome is being turned out with other horses and you've got, you know, the lead mare and then maybe some other geldings that are pushing them around. It's usually the lead mare though, with the geldings, it's a funny thing. Um, and of course I'm speaking from my own experience. So after your vet looks at all that, then we're, they are going to look at treatment and management strategies. So there's no cure, but you, you can, you know, look into various treatments and strategizing, you know, the environment. Unfortunately, there isn't a one size fit all fits all kind of treatment for fecal water syndrome. There just isn't any of you who are dealing with it, you know, there isn't. Sometimes you try a new supplement and it works for, you know, a couple of weeks and then boom, it's back. And you're like, what? I thought I had the cure because we're always so hopeful. It's not fun to deal with. Oh, you really want to address any potential stressors and look at the disruptions in the GI tract. That's really critical. All right, so here's some strategies that might help. Might make some social adjustments. You know, you, you, you may want to consider changing or reducing the size of the turnout group, especially if your horse is low man on the totem pole. Then you look at dietary changes and, you know, I would suggest or vets would suggest that you gradually adjust the diet under the guidance of your vet or even a nutritionist. So there's some horses that are going to benefit from less bulk or long stem forage, while others might respond to omega-3 fatty acids or stabilizing supplements like baker's yeast. Testing treatments. If medications or supplements are suggested, you're going to need to test them one at a time to monitor their effects on the fecal water syndrome. You really want to take it slow, guys, and you want to give it time. And honestly, get a journal and write every day what you're seeing, okay? And what you've been doing. It's really imperative or you're going to go crazy. Additionally, it's important that you keep the skin on your horse's butt clean and dry to prevent sores. Some people use Desiden and they swear by it. I never did, but some people do. Your vet may have practical advice for maintaining skin health, including tips on blanketing, fly management, and using protective products like petroleum jelly to keep the tail and back legs clean. I like the petroleum jelly just makes a barrier. The desitin would work as well. So managing free fecal water syndrome can be a challenge, but if you understand the potential causes and treatment options, that's key to finding relief for your horse. Just remember, it's always important to consult with your vet when you notice any changes in your horse's manure. Early diagnosis and a tailored treatment plan can make all the difference in your horse's comfort and well-being. Well, that wraps it up. Thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and if you feel like it, please subscribe to the Backyard Horse Enthusiast for more equine care tips and insights. And until next time, take care of your horses and happy riding. Thank you.